Hey everyone, this is Ara Derdarian of the HT Guys, and today I'm going to show you how I turn this into these. So if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that I've gotten into uh, building speakers and working with wood. And along the way, I've discovered American chestnut. And it's a tree that no longer exists in the United States, uh, or effectively no longer exists. There's a few uh, trees left. It was wiped out by a blight uh, from uh, bringing over chestnut from uh, China. And the pioneers used this wood. Uh, they called it the cradle to grave a tree because uh, you basically made cradles and you could make caskets and everything in between. And right now the only way to get this wood is through um, reclaimed uh, whether it, when they take down a barn or something. And uh, I found a place out in Tennessee and they took down this barn here. That you'll see here in a second. It's, uh, it was in Rogersville, Tennessee. And so I bought a bunch of this wood and I decided that I wanted to make some speakers out of it. But here's the amazing thing about this wood. The, the barn was built in the late 1800s, uh, so it's over 100 years old. The trees, when they were harvested, uh, were probably anywhere from 50 to 100 years old. So what that means is the trees that uh, the speakers that I built were made out of were standing at the time of the Civil War, and possibly they were standing at the time of the Revolutionary War, depending on how old the trees themselves were, but for sure the Civil War. So these speakers, when you put them on your desk and look at it, it's kind of like I'm looking at history. Um, trees that were around at the time of the Civil War, and then a barn that was over 100 years old, and now they're on my desk creating music. It's a really cool story, and I, I'm really excited about working with this kind of wood. Since this was the first time that I used this wood, I used the smaller and more narrow boards because I didn't want a chance at ruining some of the wider boards that I'll use on some subsequent builds. Uh, they weren't even and I didn't have a planer, so you can see in this picture the, some of the unevenness. And I tried to put uh, the, the flush size on the outside, uh, but with that they were still not perfect. And what I had to do is on the inside, I had to seal it with construction adhesive. Uh, I worked that in with my finger. I don't have a picture of it, but I kind of got in there really good to seal it as and make it as uh, airtight as I possibly could. Plus, I put a protective layer as well on the inside, trying to keep uh, all the uh, so there'd be no leaks of air, uh, except for where I wanted it through the vent tubes. And finally, what I ended up doing was putting some foam in there to help uh, deaden some of the vibrations and keep it as uh, quiet as possible or vibration-free as possible. On the, on the baffle, I used my circle jig, cut some holes for the uh, drivers themselves, and then I put in uh, with a, a drill, with a hole saw, I cut holes for the vent tube and the speaker cup, uh, the uh, terminal cup. The driver I decided to use for this build is the Mark Audio Pluvia 7. It's a four inch full range driver, and I'll talk about uh, why I decided to go with full range in a little bit. Um, I decided to choose the gold color. It comes, I think, in silver and maybe one other color, but I thought gold looked really uh, cool with the uh, wood that I decided to use. And this is the measurements that uh, Mark Audio uh, provides on their um, data sheet for the driver itself. This is measured in open air, and um, I did take some measurements with my um, enclosure and the driver, and I'll show that in a little bit as well. But uh, what I ended up doing was going to a website and I found a calculator here. It's a linear, uh, linearteam.dk and it kind of tells you how big of a vent you should use and how long you should use it for the uh, size box that you're building. In this case, I have a 0.15 cubic foot and I'm using one vent uh, with a one inch diameter. And uh, so that told me that I needed to have a four inch tube and that got me 56 um, Hertz is what the speaker itself was um, tuned to. So why did I go with a full range uh, driver? I, I did a lot of research online and there's a lot of pros and cons. We'll discuss those um, here in a little bit. Uh, but however, you know, I got to be honest. One of the main reasons is that it was easier to build. I built a dis desktop um, speaker, a bookshelf speaker previously and it had separates. 
and I had um, a really nice uh, tweeter and a good driver. But the crossover circuit that I bought was from Parts Express. It was one of their you know stock pre-built ones. And I heard a lot of, uh, there was a lot of comments in the um, comment section of the video saying I left a lot of performance on the table. And there was all kinds of design issues with the, uh, with the cabinet itself, which I didn't uh, take into account. So it was just kind of, it, it's, you can build very good speakers, but you really need to uh, take some time and do it right. I'm not saying that uh, what I'm di what I did here was wrong. It just was very easy to make some speakers that just sound incredible. Uh, sitting in front of these speakers, I couldn't get over how good it sounded. So let, let's talk about some of the pros and cons of this. Uh, one of the main things is there's no phase shift due to the crossover circuit. And what that means is at the point where you cross over, like where it would send the frequencies above, let's say 2,500 uh, hertz to the... Um, tweeter and then everything below that goes to the woofer at that crossover point there are uh, issues that would happen with uh, phase and your ear can hear that and it it makes it sound a little bit off uh, good speaker designers can deal with that so that it is not an issue but you need to make sure you have a, a really good crossover you need to have the speakers uh, installed properly the drivers installed properly recessed you need the edges of the baffle to be uh, rounded over. There's a lot of things you have to do. And if you don't know what you're doing, it can be a little bit, um, what's the word, intimidating. Uh, with, without that uh, crossover cable, uh, with <laughs> crossover cable, without the crossover uh, circuit, you just put the driver in the baffle and uh, you're good to go. So a corollary to the... Um, uh, no phase shift due to the crossover circuit is you don't have a crossover circuit. It saves in cost, saves in complexity, and saves in uh, installation. Then a uh, great mid-range sound. The full range drivers, uh, I think all the research I did and exactly listening to these drivers with my ears, I have not heard uh, mid-range, uh, the vocal portion of songs, uh, of, the, of the hearing, the vocal portion of the uh, sound spectrum sounds incredible coming out of these speakers uh, and uh, a lot of people say that it's some of the best vocals that you'll hear are on uh, full range drivers again this is the research I'm finding and a little bit I'm getting this kind of experience listening if you've got issue with what I'm saying I'm learning uh, hopefully you can share your knowledge with the listeners in the comment section and we can all kind of learn together all right, so then uh, there's high sensitivity. The drivers themselves don't require a lot of energy to create sound. So you'll usually have drivers that have lower uh, wattage capability, but you don't have to pump them with a ton of watts to get the, that really great sound out of it. Uh, now, with that said, these particular drivers aren't the most sensitive, but uh, there are other ones that are in the 92, 93, uh, you know, 95 dB uh, range. All right, so what are some of the cons of full range drivers? And uh, pretty much what I have found is there's limited frequency reproduction, and that's mostly on the high and the low end. And these drivers, you know, they're only four inch, they can't produce a lot of low end bass. Uh, I think uh, measures at like uh, 75 or 85 open air. Um, I was able to get lower and you, you'll see a plot here in a little bit because of the cabinet. So what a lot of designers will do is they will use the uh, porting to get a lower base level and that's, they call that base extension and the cabinet itself helps with the low end. Now on the high end, some of the bigger drivers, um, I guess, can't get as high frequency these are pretty small and, and I'm be surprised uh, th they did create some pretty decent high end uh, or high frequency sound and uh, above what I could hear. So whether it can do 30 kilohertz doesn't matter to me because once it gets above 16, I really can't hear it. But the plot shows how high it did go. And then there's something called inner um, intermodulation distortion. And what that is, is the 
when certain frequencies are trying to play at the same time, they can kind of cancel out. Well, they don't cancel out. They interfere with each other and create something that you don't want to hear. So when you have one driver making all that sound, that's the situation that you have. When you have separates, uh, the higher frequency goes to you know the tweeter or the mid-range, and then the um, lower frequency will go to the woofer, and you don't have uh, those competing frequencies coming out of the same driver mechanism. Um, now, one thing to consider when you have separates, like let's say you have a, um, a cymbal or some other uh, instrument that has sound that is in multiple frequencies. So imagine now that sound f that was made by that instrument has to go to the uh, crossover circuit and then go up to the various drivers and then has to be reassembled at your ears. And that's where uh, it gets a little bit difficult to do, whereas on the single, the full range driver, it doesn't have to go through that. So it almost sounds more uh, lifelike. And that was kind of my experience sitting in front of these speakers in the near field. Um, there's a sweet spot where it just sounds incredible. And uh, that's one of the issues though. If you're in the sweet spot, a lot of people won't argue with you saying how great it is, but outside of the sweet spot, they say it kind of degrades a little. So the key is if you're doing critical listening, you're gonna wanna be in the sweet spot. These particular uh, speakers that I built are more desktop so it's perfect for someone who's got them on their desk and uh, listening to music or gaming or whatnot it's right there you're in the sweet spot sound phenomenal and uh, that's pretty much the pros and cons uh, let me know what you think put some comments in the uh, um, comment section and uh, let's have a discussion on it but uh, I'm really excited about this and I think I'm gonna build some more full range drivers with uh, with bigger uh, bigger drivers so we we'll see what uh, the sound is I can get out of those we are just about the time where I'm gonna play some music through here but before we do that I wanted to show you some uh, different angles and different uh, sh uh, views of the speakers I think they look absolutely beautiful now I was going for a rustic look so you'll see that they are not perfect but that was kind of what I was going for think about this would be something that the pioneers would have built and uh, they would have like built it by hand and not necessarily had the finishing tools uh, that a lot of people have today if you are interested in these speakers uh, you want I will be happy to sell them to you I would like to uh, sell them maybe and get a little more money so I can build some more speakers and uh, I'm really having a good time and um, I think that would help. Uh, my wife doesn't want me to just uh, build speakers to collect them. So send me an email at ara at htguys.com. I'm sure we can figure something out. So what you're looking at now is a plot of the frequency response. I did have um, a setup. I used the EQ Wizard and I had a Behringer um, microphone that was made for testing. Uh, so this is what it looks like. It looks a little bit different than the uh, open air um, test that um, Mark Audio did. I did get some pretty good bass extension out of it. Uh, the high end looks pretty good, but uh, in between 1 and 2, um, 1K and 2K, there's a dip in there. And so um, I'm sure there's probably something I can do to fix that, but that, that's just what it is. And I just put it out there for you to, to, um, uh, to see. What you're going to listen to now, now granted, it's kind of hard to listen to speakers uh, uh, on a YouTube video, but I did use a high quality microphone and I had to run it through the mixer, what I use for the podcast. I um, was running the um, audio engine B1 DAC, running it into the N22, the audio engine N22 amplifier. So pretty good gear and uh, decided to play it depending on how you're listening to it could have an impact but um so let's go take a listen first thing up is a low frequency uh test i just put some loops together in uh, garage band and then uh there's um some rock music and vocal so that these are going to push the uh, extremes the low end you'll get a good test to here how it can reproduce low end uh, rock music where I got a lot of stuff going on at one time and then the vocals where I think these uh, speakers shine again this is just kind of like uh, a reference because it's not going to sound as good as it would if you were sitting in front of it <laughs> 
that sounded um, it was fun building these speakers and again uh, if anything all we did was prove that uh, the speakers will th move air <laughs> and make sound they really do sound good uh, I understand it's hard to hear uh, what they sound like through uh, this setup and through YouTube and whatnot but uh, if you're interested in purchasing these they are really good sounding speakers uh, please contact me ARA at htguys.com I'm sure we can work something out um, I do want to build more of these speakers, and so it's it's kind of fun, but uh, it's cost some money, and this way at least I can recover the cost of the uh, speakers, and I guess we can all kind of learn together. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can uh, support us by going to our website, htguys.com. Uh, there's various ways to support the show. Uh, we do have a podcast. If you found us just because you were Googling on uh, YouTube and you were looking for these types of speakers, we do put out a podcast weekly. It's the HDTV and Home Theater Podcast. Uh, we do a lot of stuff there from making speakers, home automation, home theater, and that kind of stuff. Uh, htguys.com. 
send feedback to uh, htguys at htguys.com. Uh, we really appreciate your support and you listening, and thank you very much.